Hi, welcome to our very first uh, live webinar. I don't know if you guys can hear us. Uh, I think there's about uh, eight people at the moment that are logged in. If you can hear me, please um, use the chat box to just say yes and uh, we'll get started soon. Okay, so let's go on to, while I'm changing screens, I might put let you watch uh, my little fish swimming. Okay, um, Okay. let's start here. Yeah, um, I think most of you guys know, if, if you've already done aquaponics, most of you people will have uh, seen this sort of system. This is the basic DIY aquaponics system. Uh, I think I think I can see my cursor. But basically, this is a media-based uh, flood and drain system. So what happens here is you've got a fish tank with fish and they obviously create um, wastage, uh, some food that they don't eat goes to the bottom of the tank. That creates ammonia-rich water. Uh, you have a submersible pump that then pumps water up to a grow bed, a media grow bed. That media grow bed is usually filled with um, uh, grow media such as LECA, lightweight expandable clay aggregate or clay balls. Um, that media bed uh, acts as support for the plants, but also it uh, acts as a um, concentration of, of, sorry, it houses the beneficial bacteria. The beneficial bacteria created communities within this this grow media, so this becomes a biofilter in essence. And the beneficial bacteria then convert toxic ammonia into nitrite, which is also toxic to fish, and another set of beneficial bacteria converts nitrite into nitrate, which is not toxic to fish, and that then obviously feeds the plants. So that's a typical DIY aquaponic system. Moving on, uh, I'm going to take you to the next level, which is a typical commercial type um, flood and drain aquaponic system. In this case, you would have a sump. Now, the reason for the sump is that when you have a flood and drain grow beds, if all these beds had to drain at the same time, there might not be capacity uh, within the fish tank. In other words, uh, we call this freeboard. From the top of the fish tank to the top of the water level, that is the freeboard. So if you've got too many tanks, sorry, too many grow media beds, discharging into the fish tank, the fish tank is going to overflow and hence why the sump was invented okay, on bigger systems. So when you have a lot of grow media beds, um, it's always advisable to have a sump. So this system works well, it's fine, but the hybrid system is probably a better bet and I think you guys will find some, uh, some benefits. Um, if you already have a system, you could maybe adapt it to the hybrid system, which I'm going to show you now. Uh, alternatively, if you're going to build a new system, keep keep the split hybrid design in mind for your new design because that's the way to go, I think. And you'll see the why and, and, and the benefits that I'm, I'm trying to convey to you. So let me find the next uh, slide quickly. So just uh, hold a second. Okay. Okay, I'm going to move on to whiteboard. Um, so that brown line that you see there, assume that is your ground level. Okay. So I'm going to design a split system, so you can see step by step what you need to do. Uh, you would start off with a sump, and that sump would be below ground. Let me just change the color. Okay. Uh, then um, above ground, you would have your grow beds, and you would have your fish tank. 
okay and of course you're going to have a, um, a mechanical solid separator filter and you're going to have a biofilter. Well, you don't really need a biofilter if your grow beds are uh, flood and drain, but if they were deep water culture or NFT type system, then you would need a biofilter. Okay. So let me try and label these things so you understand what's going on here. Uh, this is the fish tank. fish tank yeah you have the sump uh, grow beds and then you have a um, Solid separator filter, and you have a biofilter. I'm going to try and do which is which. So, separator filter biofilter. Okay, so those are the components that you need in the split system. Let me now show you how the water lines would run. So from the pump you so from the sump you'd have a pump. Let me just draw a pump quickly. Uh, you'd have a pump there. These are your water lines. So you've got a water line going up. Let me take the arrow off. Um, and from there you split it. there this goes into the fish tank and then of course this flows into your solid separator from the solid separator it flows into your biofilter from the biofilter it goes into the sump and from the grow beds also into the sump and then what you'd also need is um, it red. I'm going to put some valves. So you put a valve there and you put one there. Okay, so water is going to flow in this direction from the sump and it's going to flow in that direction into the grow beds. And then of course back into the sump and back into the sump. Okay. So here are the benefits of the split system. If you design your system this way, the sump there, fish tanks, grow beds, you would then, if it was a, an emergency with either the fish tank or your grow beds, let's assume, for example, that um, some emergency hit your fish tanks and your fish all got sick and they started dying uh, or they all died but at that specific time you had grow beds full of plants and um, you just had to continue with your with your uh, harvest uh, 
So you're not going to throw your plants away because your fish have died. So in that situation, what you would do, you would close off this valve, okay, which would then make the water just go into your grow bed, back into the sump. You'd add nutrients to your sump, and this would become a hydroponic system just typing it here hydroponic system okay and the reverse applies if for example something you couldn't get seedlings or you didn't have enough seedlings and uh, you just didn't want to be growing vegetables for a while uh, you just wanted to keep your fish going uh, in that situation again you would then um, close off this valve Oops, sorry you'd close off this valve and water would then flow this way and what you have then is an aquaculture system Aquaculture, of course, being another name for fish farming. Aquaculture. Uh, change that to. Okay. So that's the split system. Uh, very quickly explained. Something goes wrong with your fish tank. Close off this tap get rid of the fish, clean up, whatever has to be done, uh, get rid of the dead fish, and continue uh, your system as an hydroponic system. So the water will flow this way. And vice versa, if something goes wrong with your plants, or you don't want to grow plants for a specific time, you shut off this valve here, and you move on to the side. And that becomes an aquaculture system. So you can do can keep your fish going for a long time uh, you can do fish farming on the side okay so it's pretty easy for you to change your existing systems by just changing a few feed lines and uh, it all depends what you've done uh, but you can easily change your systems alternatively if you are going to design a new system especially if it's a commercial system keep this design in mind it uh, a lot less maintenance inten intensive if something goes wrong on either of these components you can you can sort it out fairly quickly so that is the the split system let me try and bring up a picture of a better picture If you guys have got any questions, uh, feel free to add on to the chat and I'll see if I can then help you with the answer. Um, just trying to find. Okay. So that is what I <laughs> attempted to design just now. You've got your your sump that's a slightly better drawing for you and that's it for now uh, I, th I thought uh, that um, I would share this information with you guys I think it's still be important if you are uh, thinking of going commercial especially I wouldn't worry too much about your DIY or home system but yes you could do the same thing with a with a small home system if, if needed be I mean you if for example you um, I don't know you don't want to grow plants so you couldn't get seedlings just uh, run it as a as a aquaculture system for a while or if you wanted to get rid of your fish tired of looking after fish and feeding them then convert it into an aquaponic system fairly quickly but it really doesn't apply on too much on a small system, more on, on, on bigger systems. 
so yeah um any questions please let me know uh, i don't know how many people are actually on at the moment we had about 50 people registering but i think only a fraction of that have actually joined us so thank you for taking your time uh, i'm going to share you share with you also some parts of our ebook we got an ebook that you might be interested in having a look at i'm just going to give you some a peep into it okay um, um so there got some questions coming through uh, what pumps I think Donny is asked what pumps do you use electrical air uh, yeah we, we use electrical water pumps they they're quite uh, what's a low power nowadays so you get, you get a quite a, a big throughput pump with very low wattages so it's not going to hurt your tele uh, your electricity account too much Airlines, yes, airlines, you also need an air pump of sorts. You you need an air pump for your fish tank. And uh, if you're doing deep water culture or maybe even NFT, you'd have to have some um, air stones in your either your sump or your deep water culture beds and in your fish tanks. Uh, but pumps, there's quite a few submersible pumps. Uh, there's some on our website. There's a PG-8000 for bigger installations, a PG-10000. Okay, another question coming through. Um, George, when using borehole water that contains lots of minerals, are there any special considerations? Uh, I think the, the most important thing when using borehole water is looking at the pH of the water uh, and also the salinity. Although salinity to an extent is good for a lot of the tilapia species, they, they thrive in, in, in the salty water, but um, yeah, it's always good to have your water tested. The pH is, being is, is the most important. You don't want uh, pH to be changing drastically whenever you do water change on your system. Okay, coming back to the ebook, let me just give you a, a little preview of the... Uh, so it's about 140 pages and what we've got in the book is a lot of pictures and uh, a lot of the stuff that we've done over the past eight ten years we shared everything we share everything here with you we go into detail on everything uh, water quality some of the system designs that you can do what you must look out for um, bacteria which most people ignore bacteria is very very important in your systems um, let me just uh, there's bacteria um, water quality fish we even touch on spawning and uh, breeding mainly on the Rendali species um, and then on each different type of fish, we also got that sort of information on the fish. Okay, so this is the the red breasted. It's possibly one of the, I would say, it's the best uh, fish for aquaponics. Um, in South Africa, it's Afrikaans people call it the uh, rooibos kurpa, the red breasted tilapia. Uh, it's a good eating fish. It doesn't grow too big in captivity, but um, the beauty about this fish is that it will eat uh, greens, uh, your lettuce, your offcuts, and um, yeah, you save a lot on fish food if you've got these guys eating your, your greens. Okay, I'm um, trying to give you some more of a brief look in here. Let's go into plants um, to see. So with plants, we touch on the nitrogen cycle, deficiencies in aquaponics, and uh, nutrients. Let's go into nutrients. There we touch on the, the important nutrients that you 
need to have. Um, but yeah, we discuss this in in, uh, in detail in our workshops. I think the next one is on the 23rd of February. We still have seats available if you guys are interested. And um, yeah, so that's about it on that side. Got some more questions here. Let me just see if I can read a few more here. Okay, Donnie, what products do you use as a pesticide that will not contaminate your sump water and kill the fish? There are some organic pesticides that you can use. Um, we use, uh, or we sell on, on, our, on our website, we sell a thing called Pyrol and, and, and Nudisan. Uh, pyrrole um, does have a, a poison that can affect fish in, in high dosages, but then again, you're not going to be spraying that onto or into the fish tank or into the water. What you're going to be doing is spraying the leaves only, and uh, you would spray it in the evening when the sun goes down, and then by sunrise, most of that, um, it loses efficacy. So that's something you can use. You can also try and use things like um, uh, some people have, have used, uh, for, for aphids, have used uh, sunlight liquid and things like that, but it doesn't really work. I mean, you know, it'll work for one day and then they're back the next day. So that's about it for now, guys. Um, I think we, we, we will, no, 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 I think we'll be doing this uh, more often in future. Uh, at least once per month and uh, we'll be sharing a few things I th the next one will probably be on uh, a different type of siphon that uh, you can do it yourself the bell siphon is fine for small systems but on bigger systems you might need something more reliable and um, yeah uh, I think the next the next uh, webinar will be around uh, that particular siphon um, yeah so thank you for attending by the way guys um, I think this this uh, this is recorded so if you've missed it or if you came in late let me know uh, send a send me an email uh, you can find my email on our website www.myaquaponics.co.za and um, I will forward you a link to to this um, to recording recorded version of this webinar Yeah, um, so Donnie, yes, we have the book online. So if you go to the bio on this video, on, on, on YouTube, I've put a special link there where you can get it for $9.95, which is a discounted price, and you can buy it online with your credit card. Um, otherwise, it's 380 Rand in South Africa, but um, through that um, link, you can get it for $9.95, which is just over... Um, 150 rand, I think, um, depending on the exchange rate, or just on 150 rand. So it's on 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 this video's bio uh, description, just uh, scroll down, and you should see the link to to buy the ebook at the special price. Okay, guys, I'm knocking off. Uh, it's uh, 7:30. Thank you for for attending. Um, feel free to play it back and if you came in late you should all be there uh, and again if you want to watch it and you don't have the link send me an email and I will I will supply you the link have a good evening and thank you once again thanks bye bye